Welcome, welcome to Angry Appliance Repair Person. For the record, you're looking at them. So, this presentation is going to be about refrigerator door gaskets. The gasket is rubber with a magnet inside of it. So every time you open and close the door, you pull the magnet off of the metal, it stays in the rubber to hold it in place. When you shut the door, the magnet makes contact with the metal of the refrigerator to help the air stay in and the warm air stay out. The problem I see is when a homeowner opens the door and they see a black strip about that long on the bottom, on the floor, and they have no idea where it came from. Sometimes they think it's their five-year-old left something on the floor. They don't realize that strip actually came from the door. There is a magnetic strip in the gasket, one on each side. That magnetic strip is what holds it against the frame every time you close the door. When the gasket is dirty, or when the frame of the refrigerator is dirty, and you open and close the door, you stretch the rubber. The rubber eventually tears, and then the magnet falls out. I have had numerous customers that I have put many gaskets on, trying to tell them that you must keep the metal of the unit clean, and you must keep the face of the gasket clean. The face of the gasket is the flat part of the gasket. You open the door, look at your door. You will see a flat part. If you actually feel it, you'll feel something in there. That's the magnet. You do not want the magnet to tear and fall on the floor. If it does, you will get warm air into the refrigerator. In the refrigerator section, it will be condensation. In the freezer section, it will be frost. You'll see frost everywhere. So the magnet's job is to make sure the door stays shut and to keep the cold air in, warm air out. When it falls out, you will not have a good seal anymore to help prevent it from tearing. You need to keep the gasket's face, that flat face, and you need to keep the metal clean. Almost always, it is on the bottom. It is easy. Someone big and fat like me, when I open the door, I can look at the three sides of the gasket with ease. Uh, it, I can feel the metal. Eh, the metal feels okay. The gasket feels okay. That's usually not where it is. It's almost always on the bottom where the, you open the door and you look at the bottom strip of the metal of the frame of the unit where the gasket makes contact and you put your hand there, you'll feel it's very sticky. Grape juice, whatever, drips onto that from the refrigerator and it starts to pull the gasket away. I will use my best interpretation. When you open the door, if you hear a that's not good. That means you are pulling the gasket every time you open the door. And if you pull the gasket too hard, you will rip the rubber and the magnet will fall onto the floor. So to prevent it, you need to keep the gasket as clean as possible and not sticky and the frame that the gasket sits against. Soap and water works the best. You don't really need any other cleaners. Soap and water, little elbow grease, you'll take it right off. That is the best way to clean it. But if you do not, and those gaskets get very, very sticky, and the frame is sticky, you will tear them, and you will probably spend uh, 250 dollars $300, something like that, to be able to pay a man to put the gasket on. To try to save that, gaskets can last a very long time, if not the life of the refrigerator, as long as you keep that frame clean and the gasket clean. This applies to top mount refrigerators, side-by-side -side refrigerators, and where I'm going next, French door bottom mount refrigerators. Now that particular one, French door, there are ears here and here on both doors. When you close that door, you close the right hand door onto the left hand door, it overlaps. So the ears help clog the holes at the top and I shouldn't say hole, my bad. The, the opening at the top and the opening at the bottom. Those ears, their job, is to just stop the line of sight, as I like to say, which means you are looking straight at your refrigerator and you can see those ears in between the doors overlapping each other so you cannot look in. At the top and the bottom, those ears on the French door refrigerators rip a lot. I have seen a lot of them. Almost every refrigerator I've worked on that's three or four years old or older, 
I will open the doors as I am troubleshooting the problem and I will see that they are torn. The problem is French door refrigerators are meant to be opened together and closed together. Now, one of your doors, usually facing the refrigerator, it is the left door, but not always, that is where the flipper is. There will be a flipper that when you open the door, the flipper attaches. So when you close the left-hand door first, the flipper pops out, so the right-hand door sits against it. The companies want you to open the doors together and close the doors together, left first, then right. So that flipper goes in, sits in place, and then the door closes. Every manufacturer that makes one of these wants you to close it that way. If you do not, you will have trouble getting the ears not to tear. Now, if the ears tear, it is not the end of the world. You can keep, but what is that smartest man in the house? Yes, I understand that if the ears tear and the serviceman comes out to replace the gasket, then he will be giving him work and it is something that has to be done. But I'm trying to save the people money here. Stop thinking like a technician. Think more like a consumer. Remember, do it yourself as don't do it here. We are talking to consumers here. If those ears rip, it is not the end of the world. You don't necessarily have to have them. Your refrigerator will not die. You will not have moisture problems or issues. Everything will be fine. Those ears job is just to close that gap so you can't see in thinking there's a problem. But as I tell everyone that has the ripped ears in the corners of the French doors, always open and close the doors together. Right, left, open them together and then close the one with the flapper first, then follow with the other one. Usually it's the left. And number two, if you do not see any moisture in here and those ears are ripped, you're okay. The problem you're going to have, warm air rises. If you have moisture droplets on the ceiling of the inside of the refrigerator, you have an air leak. And it could be because of that. Keep that in mind. But if you don't see any air leaks and you know they're ripped, eh, so what? Keep using it. Something else might die before that gives you a problem. Keep that in mind. Now, for the senile thought each week, something that I try to train new technicians to do, but customers need to do this too, and that is, listen. Yes, that technician might be standing there on a Friday at two o'clock thinking, I wonder who's going to win the game. I really don't want to be here. That game is on in two hours. I want to go home and watch it. But you need to listen to the customer because as every good technician knows, sometimes you are going to fix the customer for usage problems, not necessarily a broken appliance. So if you listen to the customer and he, that customer gives you all the information that they know, a lot of times things will be better in service. And on the customer's part, you must tell the technician everything. It did it, it, this day it worked fine, this day it did not work. This is what I heard, this is what I saw, this is what it did. The moon was kind of out of position that day and it was shining on the appliance. Did it cause it to break? I don't care, whatever it is. But you need to be informative because I can't tell you how many times I'm standing there listening to the customer. They tell me something and a light bulb goes off in my head telling me, okay, I know what the problem is now. She just explained it to me very well. Now I know what to do. And, and then I go right to it and I find the problem right away. A lot of times a good serviceman can listen to the customer and figure out what's wrong with the appliance even before they take a tool out. That is the way to try to do it. Let the consumer tell you what's going on and to the consumers make sure you give them as much information as you can we are looking for differences different signs different longer or shorter run times when did it stop if it has a digital display what was on it all of that helps us so even though the technician may be tuning you out give that technician th the I should put it as give that technician a good education, I'm going to put it that way, on what is wrong with that appliance. That way, hopefully that technician can figure out what's going on and not have to tear the whole appliance apart for something that might not be the appliance's fault. So, 
The more information you give that person, the better it will be. And I hope that that technician understands that they need to listen to you to get you to tell them what's going on, to know how to possibly fix it and save some time. Time is money. And as always, we thank you for spending some of your day with us.